fucking go! You're listening to Bread and Circuses. It's like the mob media, for one, is the entire world populated. Like, everybody's mm-hmm. on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Fucking the UK is on Twitter. Like, you know what I mean? Like, unfortunately. With Caleb Salvatore. Well, they can't. They can't go to the comedy shows because there's a two drink minimum, and you can't mix the Percocet you've been stealing from work with with liquor. And Nick Kohler. There'd literally be people in the fucking '80s that didn't know that nothing in a girl would make her pregnant. No, no one's asked that question. What did those families do to provoke Alex Jones like that? You know what'll solve all of these these racial police protests? A Pepsi. What the fuck is up, friends? Welcome to Bread and Circuses. We're back from Caleb Salvatore. And I'm Nicholas Kohler. I'm going to say that's your cue. <laughs> We're yes. here with David Terrell Green. He's a good friend of ours. What's from the up? Scene. What's up? He really wanted to come on and outdo Justin Healy in terms of ridiculousness. So I, we're, I, I do, but like, I probably am not going to because right now I have water in my cup. So uh, that's not a good, that's not big a good shoes st- to fill. You right? come that's and kill. Not, a good, not a good start. So I, what, what did he what did he kill half a bottle of? By the time oh, my God. Left? No, it was a full <laughs> bottle of that fucking that red whiskey. It's like some peach whiskey shit that we were having. And I, oh, I had had like a glass and he was on there just fucking lit off that shit, man. It was, he's like, I'm like, are you okay to drive home? And he goes, probably not. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take you home. <laughs> I, uh, Frankly, it was pretty awesome. I went, uh, I hung out with these guys when they were drinking and uh, him and Caleb had a fight in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun, it was a friendly fight it, it wasn't was, like we were mad at each other yeah they weren't mad at each other it was like playful sparring but it was still like really weird to watch it to yeah. begin with like there was but a he, car horn honking at him and stuff like it was we blocked some lady in <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't get out because we were fighting behind her did this happen in a parking lot or something yeah yeah because yeah, like um I think we were at a karaoke spot or whatever. Was, yeah. Or like it was a bar that just so happened to have karaoke. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, they were already drinking, but like the drinks continued to flow. Right. <laughs> and uh, Caleb and Zach, Caleb did a stand up comedy set in the middle of a song. Yeah. Of karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't my worst set. That was that's it really wasn't because after he said the jokes, there were people laughing. So it yeah. was like, all right, so he's on to something. People you know? laughed at me. I yeah. I think that's a new strategy. I'm just gonna go bomb at open mics, but yeah, exactly. You just instead of open mics, you just go to karaoke and just try out new material. So <laughs> you just ambush people. Exactly. T- Tim used to do that in Denver. Tim Locklear was telling me about how him and a guy would go to like different bars like one time they just dro- dropped in at a chinese restaurant that they knew the owner of and they just started doing comedy to all these unsuspecting families and it, yeah that was that was how weird. did that go not well but he's like it made you better if you Man, can make them laugh. you know what doing comedy in restaurants is so stupid i hate it i did it like one time and uh they're like that's the problem because it's really awkward because people don't realize that there's like a comedy show going because yeah. no one tells them. So you got like, <laughs> you got like dudes like eating their food or whatever. They're just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the fuck is going like, how's on? How's it going tonight? What you eating? <laughs> and they're just looking at you just like, <laughs> <laughs> which yeah, restaurant you do it? Hmm? Which restaurant you do it at? Oh man, this was, uh, this was in Harlem. Oh, okay. uh, I forgot the name. I think it was called like Harlem 10 or something like that. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. And I bombed horribly. But here's the thing. The show actually ended up doing good. Now, when I say I bombed, like my like people were laughing at my material, but like my kind of like, you know, standards as far as like, you know, uh, you know, doing good and bombing like they're very, very strict. So Mm -hmm. like, in my opinion, I didn't think I did that well. I was heckled. I was heckled in that. That was the very first time I experienced like a heckler. I, I got heckled by two people. I got heckled by because you in Harlem, so there's a lot of Hispanic folks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it was a very black and Hispanic like room. Uh, I got his uh, heckled by a Hispanic man who just loves to heckle people because like he came up to me after he's like, yeah, man, I do that all the time. You know what I'm saying? I like the I like the heckle the comedians and stuff. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's nice. Why don't you be a comedian instead of being an it's asshole? Harassing you know people. 
Hmm? instead of harassing people yeah that's what i'm saying because he thinks that like he because he apparently he does that all the time like he would do that all the time with like um other comedians because he thought that that was his shtick like oh that's nice you know what i'm saying like (laughs) like yeah heckling is my shtick yeah i don't actually go up and do comedic comedy because i'm a coward i don't know yeah um (laughs) People and don't then he, go to see the comedians there. They go to see that guy. Heckle, exactly. Heckler, that's go. You know what? If I paid $300 to go watch Bill Burr, I'm actually trying. Folks are here to see me. Yeah. I'm yeah, paying right. money. So they can see so me. They can see me. So they can see, yeah. The, the drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good Lord. The drunk jack off that wants to just heckle people. Yeah. It's, I, it, but if y'all tell you what, though, if you can shut a heckler down, you'll win the audience. Yeah. Like if yeah. you can, if you can shut a heckler down, I, I'd had, Ali would just go, Ali will just get pissed at people. Like, Dude, hecklers. Ali, it's Ali. not like Ali was good. Man, I've seen Ali deal with hecklers, and it makes me kind of uncomfortable because yeah. I think like a fight's about to break yeah. out. It's like, fuck you, dude. Why don't you come on upstage and say that? <laughs> <laughs> man, he does not play around. Yeah, Ali don't serious. give a fuck, man. <laughs> he gets very serious, and I'm just kind of, and then like the whole room gets quiet. They're just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, it's not. It, him and Tony Geist are the same because Tony Geist will just shut the fuck up and like mm-hmm. walk away. It's funny to watch, man. Because we had that one night at the back line, there was this dude, there was this homeless guy or something walked in, which is like a 24 pack of Bush Light. Were you there that night? I think I was. The little black guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was heckling Tony Geist, and he's like, Tony Geist is like, shut the fuck up. And he just walks off stage. <laughs> that was when I went on. So he heckled me, and I was like, damn. You know, things really did go downhill for Kevin Hart when he got fired from the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know who I've seen That's deal with, with hecklers really, really funnily was Streeter Kelly. I don't yeah, know if he's been up guy. in yeah, uh-huh. I don't know if he's been up in Omaha that. lately. But yeah, there were there there was uh the show up at the back line this one time and he was uh there was these like drunk chicks out in the crowd. Mm-hmm. And man, he I, and I think Streeter Kelly's gay too, isn't yeah, he? So he, he is. doesn't give a fuck when it comes to talking to chicks out yeah. there. So yeah, I, he what he's been down in like Kansas City or something like that lately. I'm surprised he hasn't come back up to Omaha at all. He's but. he's been all over. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. He's like semi professional comedian. I don't know. I don't know if he. Does I it. remember that homeless dude, man. He was gone by the time I went up on yeah. stage. So I was like, man, because I, I had jokes for the him. Yeah. Because like cause he, <laughs> he walked past me and Keonas, we walked past him, and he was just like, I hope you brothers tell the truth up there. And I was just like. <laughs> I was like, who is this dude? <laughs> I'm like, listen, uh, I hate to break it to you, man, but I'm I'm not Malcolm X over here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> speak the truth. Well, apparently he was, dude. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah. And I guess like uh he flipped off, he flipped off Kiona's and uh what's his Jeremy Plum. Yeah. And then he left. Yeah. <laughs> what I, did Jeremy Plum say that pissed him off? Nothing. I don't know. He was he, just I, crazy. I, I guess yeah. he just flipped Jeremy Plum. I, I, to be fair, I think a lot of people want to flip Jeremy Plum off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, like um, no, he flipped him off, and then he left uh, Chinese food sitting on uh, a chair. Yeah, I finished it. No, I'm just. Yeah, I was about to say, like, <laughs> don't finish that. I'm Dude. trying to get Hep C the next day. <laughs> the homeless are getting more aggressive. I've noticed, yeah. like everywhere. Like when we, I, I thought it was just like, like a Vegas and like a big city type thing. But even here, they're getting more aggressive. I was downtown the other day, and there's this homeless guy with a shirt off, just running around trying to fight people. Mm-hmm. He's a big dude too, so he's yeah. like scared. I'm like, dude, like. Someone's gonna shoot you. <laughs> That's all, like, no, like run up on like you run up on the wrong dude and it's not gonna end well. Mm-hmm. They're they're like whole towns of them in Denver, like entire blocks. It's fucking crazy. They have tent cities like in the Depression era. It's crazy to see. Vegas homeless people are uh, very intense. They are uh, because because <laughs> like there's this homeless dude like um man like he was outside of a 7-eleven and like i was pulling in to get like uh gas you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and so he was he asked me he's like uh, yes uh can i get a dollar and i said no i don't got nothing on me man so i went inside and um i was getting ready to drive to california you know what i'm saying because i was supposed to be meeting up some uh, with someone there and so um i was just i was getting uh cash back for some things and so unbeknownst to me this homeless dude is like staring right through the door <laughs> looking at me getting cash back and so like i'm walking to my car and he's like yeah man so about that dollar i'm just like bro like, <laughs> i was like bro this dude, this dude was for real like following me in my car i was like hey bro like 
I mean, I respect the hustle, man. But like, yeah, <laughs> did you like, give a dollar? Did. What? Did you give a dollar? No. Oh. No. <laughs> I, I felt like my parents. I'm like, I already said no. <laughs> <laughs> the Vegas homeless, they are a different breed. You're yeah. right. Yeah, they are. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because, like, I don't know. Maybe like the heat or whatever. Or I know they got like a lot of drugs flowing through Vegas. I don't know like what it is that like they just different. <laughs> Have, have you been out to LA before, David? Have you seen the, how the homeless people act out there, man? Um, I haven't really, like, when I was in LA, I was kind of, like, chilling on, like, the nicer side of, like, uh, oh, yeah. like the area. Like, I didn't really, like, drive too much, you know, within, like, the, uh, I, I don't know, like, the different areas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's I was, like, it's like LA. So everyone out there is like a good actor, man. They come up to you like, Hey, no, I know you think I'm just being a crazy homeless person, but I swear I'm not. My car's broken down the street. Mm-hmm. Like, and then you're telling them like, no, leave me alone, dude. And they're yeah. like, all right, fuck you. Then and they just yeah. walk, like run off and stuff. <laughs> I had in Vegas, I had a homeless man come walking around the corner hand in his pants, jerking himself off in the middle of the sidewalk, drops his pants while he's jerking off and just starts pissing in the street. <laughs> While he's yelling conspiracies about the moon landing being a hoax, it was the most peak homeless man thing. He was just missing a bottle of whiskey. It was the Basically. most peak homeless man thing I'd ever seen. Yeah. Hey, and you, man, that, that, that's pretty intense. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty intense. I think the funniest homeless person I've ever seen was actually up in up in Omaha, uh, down in South Omaha when they were doing like the, the you know when they do those fair that fair yeah. and during the summertime down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's this one homeless guy in a in a wheelchair just chilling like on the way to the fair, like acting completely still. And then as soon as somebody would walk by him, he just like blah and like <laughs> scream at him and start laughing at him when they got freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> to see like this grizzly like crusty looking old man laughing at people because he freaked him out as they're walking by <laughs> there was another homeless guy um in vegas that we saw he was like he was screaming at someone about wanting to how he's gonna whoop his ass and all this shit yeah and whenever the person would walk away he'd just change his direction at another person just keep carrying it on like he'd been talking to that person the whole time yeah and just like he was he was ready to fight everyone he switched to about seven or eight different people he was ready he was gonna whoop their ass man and then he was this on the strip yeah it was on the strip yeah on vegas boulevard yeah yeah that's you, we didn't guys, we didn't really get off vegas boulevard do you guys feel like the homeless problem up there in omaha has gotten worse over the like since the pandemic and it's gotten worse or? everywhere yeah yeah i think it's like uh, yeah i think it's been like that for like a lot of places because like there's a lot of people who uh you know lose their jobs and stuff mm-hmm. so it's just kind of like you know when you you know you do that and then like you know they no longer i don't know how to where you at you at texas i'm in el paso yeah. el paso yeah so like i don't know how that it works as far as um as far as like the uh unemployment there as far as like uh like giving the money out and stuff but like at a certain point like you know you were no longer like eligible to get mm. unemployment, you know? So like during the, you know, pandemic, when it first got started, like, yeah, they were making sure that, you know, you got like, you know, your, uh, you know, weekly payments. And then at some point they're just like, yeah, so you need to provide proof that you're actually applying for jobs. At least yeah. I don't know. They did that with me. Cause I was laid off. So like, they're like, you need to, you know, provide proof. So you have to submit five applications a day not a day up uh, a, a week, week yeah. yeah a week exactly so five applications per week as proof that you know that you're actually looking for something yeah and then it's just like you know it went from yeah so come this date yeah you're done <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're gonna yeah, stop man. exactly so it's just like and i'm way past that date now so i'm just like if if i don't have a job then it's just like oh yeah yeah <laughs> no luck there they they fucked a lot of people over with a lot of the stuff they did in the pandemic i mean it I mean, first off, the fucking acting like the twelve hundred dollar stimulus was this gift from God, (laughs) (laughs) dude. I had a fucking friend that moved up to like lives up uh, in Toronto Mm because like that's where his wife is from, man. Yeah. So he's got Canadian citizenship now. He was like, "Yeah, the whole pandemic, man. We're getting fucking like a thousand dollars every month, both of us, just because I think they uh, they owned a tourist like a gift shop up there in Toronto. So a thousand per month. Yeah, a thousand a month. Were they still working? uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a couple months, but. But yeah as of as of when i talked to him like at that point like four or five months ago yeah they were like yeah we've been getting money like the entire year just because 
our business hasn't been running and stuff because of the mandates and everything. So, so I don't know if uh, if any of you guys are like on TikTok, but like so on and off. There was this TikTok. This dude he said, um, he was like, you know, what's uh, what's one thing that you learned from the pandemic? You know what I'm saying? And I saw a bunch of like comments and stuff, you know, about stuff that they learned. And I start thinking to myself, like, man, what did I learn from like the pandemic? And you know what I realized is like with pandemic, like celebrities are like so useless. Oh, they are. They're worse. <laughs> yeah, you have to realize, hell yeah. <laughs> bro, you have to realize like how much like celebrities yeah. don't really matter to like right. our everyday life. Like, exactly. It's just like I if that really started to click like as soon as the pandemic happened. Yeah. Cause like <laughs> like they I don't know if you guys remember, but they had this thing. Where they had all the celebrities for some reason sing John Lennon's Imagine. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember that. that. Yes, yeah. that was terrible. Like that everybody, was to... literally everyone was roasting on them, dude. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> they're like that's supposed to make me feel better. Like, like I just freaking lost my job. Right. Bro. Yeah, that's like people are losing their homes. And my favorite though is like when you had them like on their Instagram accounts from their mansions. We're all in this together. Yeah. We're in this together, guys. No, we no. just stay inside. <laughs> And then, like, they had the audacity. They like Netflix put out this, uh, this, uh, damn documentary or whatever. It was called like a uh, something 2020. It was about like how bad 2020 was. Yeah. And you had all these celebrities talking about, yeah, man, 2020 was so bad. The 2020 was the worst. And like, I looked up the celebrities of everybody that was on there. Yeah. And one of them was, uh, was Oprah. And I was just like, I was like, all right, cool, man. So tell us, Oprah, how bad 2020 was for you, Oprah? <laughs> yeah, exactly. you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have enough money to buy your own city yeah. so you can quarantine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, yes, please tell us, like, you know, you couldn't go to, to couldn't go to, well, I don't know, what's a really nice, fancy place, Hawaii? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For your uh, Illuminati uh, meeting? I had, to sell, I had to sell my sixth house in Aspen. Right. Like, yeah. it was, it was oh, a rough year. You know, those billionaires are like, yeah, man, Bohemian Grove just shut I, down I because uh, the pandemic we didn't want to get sick. <laughs> I haven't been able to drink any child blood. I don't know how I'm supposed to maintain this youthful skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the supply of child blood has become a little hard. Exactly. To it's dried <laughs> up. It's, it's, it's gotten dried up. I Like, this is the worst year ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. That just really made me mad, man. I was just like, I don't know, man. It's like, all right, I had to fill out unemployment, Oprah. I know right. that you did not. <laughs> like, it's you. She probably uh, just never even heard of like unemployment. She's like, Unem is what? Is, yeah, what, what is that? Oh yeah, shit! I never it's, heard of. It's kind of it's kind of cool right now. I don't know if Omaha is kind of the same way with like the labor market and everything, where it's mm -hmm. just like all the shitty jobs that nobody wants to do, like the retail jobs and stuff. Yeah, and, like are being forced to like have to pay more now because yeah. nobody's yeah, that, doing that's it. Not, <laughs> yeah. No, everyone's just like, dude, I'm not doing that shit. It's so, like all these like retailers and stuff. Man, I literally to took a job during the pandemic because I was bored. Yeah. Like, seriously, like, you know, like, because I, I was talking to my mother about it. She was just like, bro, just, she was like, just let your unemployment come in. You know what I'm saying? Just collect the checks and then like, you know, just relax. You know what I'm saying? And this was like only a month, two months into the pandemic getting started. So yeah. this was around like, goodness uh like april like april or may and i was just like bro i just had it i'm like i have to get out of this freaking house i have to find something to do and yeah. i need to get out of this house and i was like a porter which like at the offit uh base you know in bellevue and basically what that is like if, you know with the offit building that's uh for people listening that's uh it's an air, air force, force base yeah. it's an air force base and so they provide housing you know for the people there and so for the tenants that move out it's our responsibility to go in you know, and uh, clean it up, you know what I'm saying, to make it look, you know, nice and neat for the next person that's moving in. I hated that job. <laughs> that <sounds laughs> I like really did. And job. I got paid $9 an hour. Ugh. It was disgusting. I'd rather be on unemployment. Yeah. I did yeah. not care. I just wanted a reason to get up and go yeah. do. Yeah, I just needed that, like, oh, I have to get up and go do this now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really just didn't care anymore. I was like, bro, this man, I, nah, I got to go. So. What? When it first started, I was like, I wasn't one of those people that was all about the oh, stay home, save lives. I was I was hesitant about it. But I was like, you know, maybe I could use like a two week reset, you yeah. know, and stop because like I was doing three, four mic mics a week. I was doing at least one show a week. And I was like, you know, maybe I can maybe maybe I should just like I need a reset for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, let's let's see what happens. So I did. And then about 10 days into it, I'm like, it's for the birds. <laughs> Man, <laughs> this, I'm telling I, can't. You, bro, I would like, stir crazy. I'm like, I can't, I can't be in my house that long. I'm I have to go you. somewhere. Did you guys, I, uh, do you do, uh, do you, 
do comedy stand up or not? I, I did comedy up in Omaha before I moved back down here to El Paso. Uh, okay. my, my kid got born actually the same weekend that the pandemic started, like the yeah. lockdown started and everything. Okay. So the comedy scene started back up here in El Paso, like maybe like four or five months ago. I actually did a, an open mic down the street like a couple months ago, but I, I've been doing school like and work and taking care okay. of the kids. So did you I'm ever? Kinda, what's no, no, that? No, go ahead, please. After you. I know. I was going to say I'm kind of like in the boat where Lavetti is right now because I know Lavetti is taking a break, but mm-hmm. like. No, he's I, not. I, he's back. <laughs> no, he's oh, not. He, yeah, he was night. taking a break. He, yeah, was, so. he had no choice to take a break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was a child. He was going to die. Yeah, and he was yeah. going to die. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. so worried when he got sick. Man, you know what? I, I didn't even um I didn't even know that that it was that serious until i found out that he had diabetes yeah and so like you know mm-hmm. um so i mean i personally like messaged him that you know and kind of yeah. gave him some encouragement you know Same what I'm saying? and so yeah. um but i actually saw him a couple uh you know like a little bit after that you know what i'm saying he was back you know at work mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and so yeah. he, him and i <laughs> we're supposed to be going to topeka you know what i'm saying in october to do a show so yeah he's He's far from done. He's already traveling, man. Dad, yeah. Because originally man. he said that he was he was done for the year. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, he said he was done for the year. So um, he, he was saying he could barely talk and shit. So. That's crazy. Yeah, I know it's it affects everyone differently. But yeah, when yeah. I saw that when I saw that he had when he had it, I'm like, oh, he's diabetic. Like that's not good. He yeah. was like on oxygen, wasn't he? That's what he said on Facebook. Yeah. So, he was, was rough. Yeah. Like so tube and everything. Yeah. And I. I yeah, I mean he's back though. I mean he said he was done for the year, and then like out of nowhere he's like, "Yeah, no, nah, I'm I'm gonna come back." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay," that. you know what I'm saying? People like, you know, go stir crazy, man. They can't mm-hmm. stay in the house for too long. Did you guys man. do that freaking uh, Zoom mic? I did no. it like twice, and I was like, I'd rather just not do it. Than yeah, do I was like, I, I, I watched I watched one just to like out of like curiosity to see how it was going. I was like, ah, this you know, I, I like stand up comedy is like live performance, man. It's yeah. like. You can't really get a good practice just doing it over the computer. Like that's what I'm saying. That man, I okay. I have gotten into so many debates with comedians who are remain nameless regarding this topic. And it's just like, and my whole defense is like, listen, when you it's called it's called stand-up comedy, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you stand up, you know what I'm saying, and you perform it. And like that's the thing, is like I can tell you one of my jokes right now, face to face, and it wouldn't hit the way that it would if I'm actually performing it yeah. because you're actually like in a zone. And if you're just sitting here, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I, I don't know. I just don't, I, I just don't see how that would, how that would work. Yeah. You know I'm, I'm, I'm like, doing a, I'm doing a speech class right now in school. My professor tells me about how over the past year when they were doing classes at home, yeah. that she's like, yeah, we're doing, you know, doing speech classes over the zoom. It's like, this just doesn't work. Like all the strategies and everything for it aren't the same <laughs> it's exactly. not nearly as difficult and i'm like exactly. yeah dude i'm thinking about it. and she's like a play like she's a actor so she does like play stuff and i'm mm-hmm. like yeah man it's like the same like i couldn't imagine it, you know you're doing stand-up comedy and everything because uh, like doing doing um i'm in that class with a bunch of college kids and the, mm-hmm. like you can tell the kids on there get like stage fright from yeah. it and i i fucking don't and i'm like dude i've done stand-up comedy dude it was yeah. shit in front of all these college kids fucking nothing so. i should do that i should go take like a night college speech class just to fucking go <laughs> dude, kick its ass you guys if you guys did it yeah you guys will find like it fucking easy man i'm and sure like, i so i did i took one when i was in community college like years and years ago and uh i remember the speaking was never the issue for me. The issue was like keeping it in a time frame. Okay. That was because mm-hmm. you had like, it's like the speech has to be five minutes. And if it's like, you get like a five second buffer. And if it's five seconds, you drop a whole letter grade after, after you go five seconds over. Damn, so that's was, a lot, man. That's, I know it was straight. That's, that's, that's doing a little. That was it. Metro. So like that Sheesh, wasn't even. <laughs> I I do down. my I memorize my speeches like I memorize my comedy bits. Right, I don't try to memorize it word for word. You just kind of yeah. try to memorize like the main points of Drew's of it and everything. Yeah, and then but I yeah honestly like giving a speech in like a college speech class is is easier because like you know and when you're doing the comedy you got the fucking spotlight on you mm-hmm. and i don't know about you guys either the spotlight makes it like hard because you can't see the crowd so can't see like, the audience i, yeah. I, I yeah. mean that don't really matter to me if i can't see them i can just hear them you know what i'm saying so yeah. and then like they're like um 
I know the way that they do it at the back line, like that spotlight is like on you, like top heavy. So like, yeah, if yeah. I can, if I can just see like one person, that's the person I'm just going to like, just mess with, with the, for the rest of the set. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're the only person I can see. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. so I'm sorry, but you're, you're going to have to deal with these jokes. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so like, it's just kind of like, I don't know. That's how I kind of do it. It gives those people though, that deer in the headlight feeling. So yeah, like you, yeah. I remember the first time I got on a stage and I was like, holy shit, why is it so bright? Like, yeah. What the hell is this all about? But, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I think zoom comedy is a waste of time. So it's bro, it's stupid yeah. because like, are you supposed to mute your mic? You know what I'm saying? It's just right. like, how does that yeah, work? For real, right? <laughs> yeah. Cause like, okay. Like that's the whole thing about like doing an open mic is just like when you do it, you're supposed to hear people laughing so that you know all oh, this joke works but if this mic is muted yeah I'm, am i supposed to just look at everybody's smiles like this like no bro that's it's yeah so, i don't know well i i remember i did the first one and we all got like five minutes and i just remember thinking this i was seriously two minutes into my set i think i even said it i was like you know this is a waste of fucking time <laughs> and i was like i'm, I'm done that's my time like, and then I just, just, just hit the is, hit i'm done like this is dumb you, you miss out like, on too many things like you miss yeah. out with like crowd interaction you miss out with yeah. like the physicality of holding the mic yeah the like, crowd work man like yeah. there's so much that goes into it. i mean listen i appreciate I appreciate the uh, the willingness to try. I appreciate that yeah, they made an sure. effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like you made an effort to do something that you know typically would not be done. That that's commendable. But outside of that, bro, this is stupid, bro. The waste of fucking time. <laughs> like, nah, yeah. bro. I'll just sit up here. I'll just wait. I did. I'll just wait. I did two shows because I had agreed to do them prior to COVID, sure. and they went virtual and i'm like i'm not going to be the guy that backs out of an agreement i'm going to do sure, what sure. i signed up to do but it, it, it's just even then it's just like it, it yeah it, it, you're training yourself not to expect the audience to laugh mm -hmm. and it, it's just really weird and i, I just didn't like it at all it, D does it feel like the businesses or anything up there might uh or even omaha rather might uh go back into fucking no no more not strict here. mode not no. with the no, delta the, thing going on that's no. that's kind of how they, it's looking over here sale. i highly doubt that's going to happen they are not trying to go back they no, they they trying to make their money back yeah bro. they can't afford it yeah. they're really trying to make their money back because if they and i think a lot of businesses are like that because if they close they they would rather they rather go back to the mask mandate before they close yeah. everything else yeah because like if they close like that's really gonna mess with like a lot of like the money and stuff like that yeah you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's kind of what a lot of places have done here. They've just gone back to the masks. Some of they them have yeah. done the masks, but really it hasn't changed that much. I think it's kind of like where because Delta, I think it peaked like a week ago and like yeah. the hype about it peaked like a month ago. I'm not, so there was all this happen. hype about it. I didn't see shit about it, man. I was like, bro, oh. I'm not even going to lie. I didn't even know that Delta was like, I don't COVID know. Part yeah. two. Yeah. yeah. Until <laughs> like I looked at the news because I don't watch the news, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, but, I work overnights and so they have like a huge uh television screen in the back room where you go get coffee yeah so i went to go get some coffee and then i see them talking about Del delta and then COVID, and i was like oh it's COVID." i thought that folks were like pissed off at like the airlines over something <laughs> like because i saw it trending on twitter it's like delta i'm like i don't fly delta so yeah it's like, yeah, like no, nobody, nobody. Dragged another japanese guy exactly yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a dude screaming racial slurs and a Burger King hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, just, they decided to just go drag them off. You know what I'm saying? But that's been, what I thought it was. I was like, all right, whatever. I don't give a crap. And then, like, then I realized, I'm like, oh, it's like the sequel to COVID. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's like Fast and Furious. They just go be cranking out another one. <laughs> right? Just, well, I, it's like every now, every week you'll see like an article. They're like the next variant that could be the super variant. I'm like, <laughs> the fuck off. Variant. Yeah, yeah. It's always something. I'm like, yeah, the yeah, poopy poo pee, -pee variant's gonna folks, kill bro. us all. They just trying to scare. That's folks all it is. Point. I'm that's like, what dude, it feels like man. I mean, technically, the the flu could morph into something that's killing people at like a forty percent clip. Bro. There's no others. Eventually, we just got to get on with our lives. Like I, you know? I get that they're worried about the hospitals filling up and everything, but I'm like around here, man. Like they're not full. I, yeah, and no. like our our vaccine rates are really high too. So I'm like, what are they even worried about here, man? We've like we're almost hit that like fucking golden herd immunity rate. Right. That yeah. they keep talking well, about. and like, then when I hear the hospitals give me this read the riot act and this poor me routine about oh we we don't have enough space we're blah. blah 
I'm like, I pay $800 for an ibuprofen when I go to the hospital. <laughs> the fact that you couldn't build more beds and more space for the ICU is your fault. I don't feel bad for you. I'd be curious because I haven't gone to a hospital for anything in kind of a long time. So I'd be curious, like, to talk to, like, Lavetti, man, and hear him say, like, say how fucking full the hospital was I was when he went there, man. I was in an ER when I got in an accident. There was nobody else there. It was just yeah. us. It was fucking empty. It was like it's not that bad. I don't, I don't think it's, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I don't think it's that bad, but it, yeah. that was, that was back in March. So it's not as bad as it is now. We haven't, fortunately haven't had to go to the hospital since then. So good, yeah, me and Kayla, we've been on our COVID is not real. It's I I've gone. Yeah, dude, I've been in so many <laughs> like places with thousands of people there were sixteen thousand people in machine gun kelly there were <laughs> eighty thousand people at the nebraska game i mean i was at a wedding last night you know it was i like, don't i don't really wear my mask around campus too either, much yeah. even at, my fucking Nobody boss at, my boss at work super anal about it so like mm-hmm. i'll usually just like if when she walks by i'm like oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. and then she walks by i'm like it depends because like i'll wear my it depends on like how deep it is like i'll wear my mask depending on like how like if it's like really really deep right. like if it's like just a couple of people i'm like all right whatever i'm not wearing this but yeah. like if it's like packed packed like i'm like nah I'll, I'll probably put this on you know what i'm saying i forgot i was with zach somewhere and i was like bro i, I don't i don't know where my mask is like he's like don't be that guy i'm like what you mean don't be that guy i'm like look there's a bunch of people in here like i'm I don't know. Hey. That's I'm more worried about being that guy with like everybody else wearing their mask, and then like, yeah, I'm I mean, if I wear there, a like, mask, normal. like I don't give like <laughs> why is me wearing a mask bothering everyone else from having a good time? No. Like, we yeah. still don't have a good time. I'm more, I'm more worried about getting like the stank eye from everybody or somebody being like, oh, put on your mask, you fuck, or something. Yeah, like, like, I'm like, I'm just chilling, man. Leave me alone. Like, <laughs> I don't have. I'm I'm not a fan of the masks, but I'm also I don't care if someone else is gonna wear one now. If I see you in your car by yourself with the mask on, I may point and laugh at you. If I see you out walking your dog outside with the mask on, that'll make no sense. The dog with the mask on. Yeah. (laughs) Who was that? I think it was Joe Biden's ass that was just like, so people are now going to be allowed to walk outside with their mask. I'm like, I was walking outside. (laughs) I was doing that as soon as as all of this started. No one. Who who wears their mask to go outside? That's so stupid. Like it could yeah. be in the air. Like, bro, if I get COVID from standing outside, I deserve to get it. Was it was supposed to happen, right? It was supposed, it was to, supposed to happen. To, it was supposed to happen. It's in the cosmos. I'm gonna get this and die. Yeah, for real. They say it doesn't, they say like Lollapalooza, only like 200 people got it. That's not so, sick. They say like sunlight like 15, kills it. Yeah, because you're outside the sunlight and it doesn't like stay under a roof, you know. So like 15,000 people, only 200 people got COVID. That's not bad at all. That's you really know? not bad. I mean, obviously people are like, well, we want zero people, but it's just like, that's the thing, man. It's like, it's I, I, I've you, kind could of, go to a, you could go to a place like that and motherfuckers could get the flu. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, you could go in. Yeah. You could go any place and you get sick with something. That's the thing. Like I've accepted. I'm like, all right, man, this COVID stuff probably not going to go away for nope. a while. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, probably not until like I, I said 2023, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like, who knows? Yeah. So my whole thing is like, okay, us knowing that is just like, all right, well, we just gonna have to kind of just deal with this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and if I get it at some point doing something yeah. somewhere, I'm just like, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what it is. I you know what I'm saying, but that that's where I'm at. I, we all we're all gonna get it eventually, except me. I'm never gonna get it. <laughs> except Caleb, Caleb. Except me, because I'm my god. I am invincible. I'm a god. If I just men. commit, convince myself it's not real, I will not get it. And they came out there like it's a mental thing, bro. <laughs> they came out there like Tom Brady had COVID during the Super Bowl and didn't tell anyone <laughs> something like that. <laughs> well, they gonna try to get him suspended for yeah, like what, they... four games or whatever. <laughs> His parents had it too, and he's like. <laughs> That's going to no be like the no new deflate they ran the ball all the time. <laughs> COVID Thomas, gate. Tom was kind of tired. He kept, that's why they kept running the ball all the time. <laughs> that, that's fucking hilarious, though. I, like, I know it's not funny because it's actually putting people in danger, but I do, I, I do chuckle when I see people that truly don't care, like Brendan Schaub, the comedian. 
he got it and he's like all right i don't have any symptoms and like the next day it was like a selfie of him at the beach (laughs) (laughs) that is so bad i had a friend who i won't i won't name um for lots of reasons that got covid and like four days later, sends me a Snapchat on a plane to Florida. Uh. <laughs> I was like, don't you have COVID? And this individual goes, yeah, it's a fucking cold. I'm fine now. <laughs> oh, Dude, what, I'm just, you know, when I got it, like I, I did everything that you're supposed to do, man. Like I went and got the tests and everything yep. for it. Mm-hmm. But my fucking state government wouldn't give me my test back for like a month. Yeah. And then they like they they tried calling me once to be like do the contact trace thing. Yeah. And then I missed the call because I was like taking care of my kid. Yeah. So I tried calling them back and like I guess they were too busy calling other people. So like I didn't get a call back from them for like three weeks. Yeah. So like I had COVID for like two weeks and I'm like, I but I didn't know if I had COVID. Yeah. And so I was just like, bro, am I like, should I have people over? Like, should I quarantine? Like, I don't know what the fuck to do right now. Like just keep going out. Yeah. Don't don't listen. Just hey man, you only live once. Pay a visit yeah. to the old folks' home. Visit your grandma. Right? Exactly. That's, that's so yeah, I kept I kept doing DoorDash, and you know, yeah. as, I was eating these, as I was eating these people's fucking food in the car on yeah, the man, way. Everybody there. does. Like, man, I took a sip off their drink. Yeah, yeah, man. You know what? I mean, I used to work uh, Postmates. You know, this was before COVID, but you know, you get pick up like uh, you know some food, and they get like an extra large fry. You just take one fry out, and just eat it. Yeah. I've that's read just, it's like forty percent will admit to doing. That's just the ones that admit to doing. Oh yeah, I, kind of, I was like totally scummy with that shit, man. Sometimes I forget to like give these like clearly like fourteen year olds ordering food. I like forget to give them their drink, and I'd be <laughs> like, "This person's fourteen. They're not gonna put in a complaint." So I just drink their drink as I was leaving. <laughs> That was by yeah. accident, but I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna fucking waste this iced tea, dude. I'm gonna drink it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, See, I, n- I never had like their drink. I never took a drink out of the drink. Yeah, I, that's I would, too far. I would take like just one fry. Just like, oh, these are pretty. No, good. me I'm was like, I could get this. Me was like, I, you know, I had their drink in my cup holder, and I went yeah. and gave them a, like their fucking food, and then like yeah. drove off, and I was like, oh shit, I forgot to give them their drink. Right. Like, <laughs> like, like, I don't oh, know where the fuck their house is, dude. Like, what exactly. am I gonna do, <laughs> dude? We got so we took an Uber to the wedding reception for my friend last night, and the Uber driver, like, he comes to get us, and we see he's got one of those like shitty old BMWs. And you can tell they drive like maniacs in those because that's the only reason people buy those kind of cars. <laughs> he goes gunning it down the parking lot and Mia just goes, oh God, she goes, tell me this isn't him. I'm like, yep, that's him. So we got in the car and this dude's just fucking flying out of the parking lot. Shit, there went my mic stand. This dude's just flying out of the fucking parking lot. Like I'm, I was concerned we were going to die just leaving the parking lot. And uh, we got on the interstate and he started racing a car. Oh, he started racing the car next to us on the interstate and i'm like what are you doing? he's like don't worry guys i got this it's like you gave me the eyes man i couldn't i couldn't back down he said i couldn't back down like yes you can <laughs> yes you can please back down yeah yeah with with me in the car yeah please you can do you can do whatever you want on your own time man i don't do care you, do you need a sec for that mic stand no nope, you're good we'll keep talking i'll hey, figure man, it out he's, he's an improv legend man. that's right he knows how to, you know <laughs> that mic no looks if like i somebody was fucking chin checked it if i was like, doing if i was if i was doing improv i'd be thinking of what to say right now right it'd be a long awkward pause but yeah no like you know how many times i I text and drive i'll be fine i'll figure it out we'll just roll with it <laughs> texting and driving texting and driving <laughs> i do that too man i've I actually i've mastered the art of texting and driving people are just like, really that's is. horrible but i'm like listen man all you gotta do you just get to the red light as soon as you get to that red light you just kind of look at it you know what i'm saying just kind of kind of keep you at one you, and then as soon as you hits green okay cool we back to it you know what i'm saying that's Dude, I I see people's texting and driving so often down here in El Paso that I'm just like, oh, whatever, man. Like, <laughs> well, texting and driving, he's right. There's an art to it because you see like these old people that their brains can't process quickly enough that try to text and drive. And they're they're the ones that they look down they, at their phone and they don't look up and then yeah. like drive up on the median and shit. Mm-hmm. 
like there is an art you know you one hand you use that fucking the thing on your, your keyboard where you can swipe around and it'll type words mm-hmm. out you glance down every couple seconds yeah at the red light there's an art to safely texting and driving there's you know it's <laughs> that's the problem it ain't, like, it ain't right but you know there's probably a waste do it right others. yeah <laughs> i probably i probably shouldn't say this but like but all the people that have gotten hurt because of that who like who have been texting and driving and they got hurt because yeah. of it it's because that they just be like down here like this yeah completely. yeah it's they're just like no hands on the wheel no, no eyes hands on the, on the wheel yeah. just they the, just trying they, to send a picture of their dick to somebody like well, <laughs> how dare they just, man <laughs> just how dare they, <laughs> they fucking, i i remember they used to make us watch like this british psa in in high school about texting and driving and it was just like the absolute worst like this girl's texting and driving in a car with like four of her friends and they get hit by a semi truck and the car explodes. Oh, no and wonder the one... they did. They were driving on the wrong side of the street because it was from England. That's so. right. Yeah. They're <laughs> on the wrong side of the road. And like, of course, she's the only one that lives and she has to watch like all them pull like all of her friends charred remains from the car. And, and like, and usually it's you 99.99% of the accidents from texting and driving, I'd be willing to wager, are like rear ending somebody. I'm not yeah. saying that's okay. Yeah. 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 But. That, I think that would be very rare if you were to actually like get hit by a, like a freaking semi. Yeah. And plus, it's just like I, I know like with semis, it's harder for them to stop though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that's a little bit different because I was about to say like, well, wouldn't the semi be able to stop? But like, you can't really like stop. Like, no, you can't stop a semi. Yeah, not in a dime like Never that. Mind. There's a well. I mean, like when when me and Ali got hit, like it's yeah. crazy how quick shit happens and you just can't react fast enough. Mm-hmm. Like I, when we got hit, I wasn't on my phone. We were on a, I was eyes on the road in the car in front of me and we were on a fucking one lane each way highway. Yeah. And next thing you know, this truck's just slamming into us. Like it was just like that. There's yeah. nothing you can do about it. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, I feel bad for Ali for having to wait. The first thing he, he was asleep and he just woke up to me going, Oh fuck. <laughs> the next thing you know, we're in a ditch. <laughs> that was, that was, how... I would hate to be that, that. I would hate for that to be the first thing I hear when I wake up. Yeah. Bro. Especially if you're having like a nice dream, you know, exactly. Yeah. You dream about like, you know, like something just really nice in the next you know, like a sex dream. Or then, right, oh, exactly. fuck. You turn, you turn around some, yeah, it's some sexy chick on there and she like lifts up her shirt and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, it's headlines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's crazy. You really, there's not much, like if you're going to get hit, you're yeah. going to get hit. There's things you can do to make sure you don't get hit as bad. Yeah. And there's things you can do like the natural reaction. I, I did the opposite. I tried to get out of the way. I tried to drive into the ditch to get away from the guy. Uh, they say normally what people do, will do is they'll turn the passenger side of the car toward the vehicle that's coming. And if I would have done that, we would have been hit head on. We probably would have been a lot worse, Yeah, but thankfully i i did what most other people don't do i don't know so i mean i it, it, it was so crazy because like it slows down so like in my head i was yeah, like yeah. like time really slows down truly yeah, yeah. Just, truly like, in those just moments like, just looking around and that's really funny about that that little like psa that you saw yeah how she was the only one who survived yeah because i mean if i was the only one who survived in a car crash like that blew up with like yeah. four of my other friends yeah i'd be sad but at the same time i'm like I was put here for a reason. <laughs> I am unkillable. Yeah, I cannot die. You know what I'm saying? You start looking at your hands. You know, like it's like um in a superhero movie when they realize they get their superpowers and they just look at their hands and just like, <laughs> yeah. what am I, Dad? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like, all right, son, it's about time I told you where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's so fucking because like. It, do, it does slow down like I was like because in my head I wasn't trying to like shield the blow I was like hey I'm me I get out of shit like this all the time sure. I'm just gonna maneuver my way around this mm-hmm. car and that 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 was not in the cards that day so but it got me out of a really bad loan so everything happens for a reason right Hell yeah, <laughs> that I was trapped in but yeah it was oh we had a show that next day we did i, I almost we i was never gonna cancel it like it because people were like do you still want to do the show i'm like yeah i'm getting paid of yeah. course i'm gonna still do it yeah we did have a show we had a sh- man i think ali was just like he was zero energy that day say was same with me man you, like you, it was it was well, like because the crash happened at like what one in the morning like or one in the like morning that? yeah and yeah. plus you have to think about like how tired you are you gotta go back home you gotta well, get that situated you gotta you know like 
coming back from the ER, I mean, the ER is a five hour process. You don't just get in and out. You know, mm. they had to run a bunch of tests. We didn't leave the ER until six o'clock in the morning. So like, it's so hard to sleep in an ER too. Like they like make everything uncomfortable. They make the chairs yeah. too small, like mm-hmm. slightly there on purpose. Like the bed in there in the room is too mm-hmm. small to sleep on. Like, yeah. Well, that, them. that was cause Mia was there and she had actually stayed back at the Airbnb uh, cause she wasn't feeling good. So thank God she wasn't in the car when that happened. But she, I remember she came and met with us, her and Scott came cause Scott was actually going home and I called him and Scott came and met us at the ER and uh, I remember I had to go in there to get my arm x-rayed because they wanted to see how bad it was fractured. And the lady's like, the, the technician or whatever, she's like, do you feel like they're going through like the normal questions asking you got the flu or COVID or anything? And she's like, do you feel like you're in danger at home? And I was like, can you ask me that again with her out of the room? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and everyone gave me like a look like this is not a time to be joking. I'm like, what else am I going to fucking do? But yeah, no, dude, it was we had a hotel rented because we were originally going to stay in, in Sioux City that night. And we went and slept at the hotel for like three or four hours and just did the show. I, I did it on three hours of sleep. And you because it was you and Xavier and then us, too. Yeah. And then you could tell who had been hit by a truck yeah, the yeah, night yeah. before yeah. and who hadn't. <laughs> it was like it was very business like. And so. I haven't. We haven't. Man, they they, t- they told they were telling jokes like they were for real, like presenting a PowerPoint. They were just like, so this is this, this yep. is this, this is this. All right, coming up next is uh, <laughs> truly <laughs> up there. Like, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to my presentation, my stand-up comedy bit today. Truly, that's <laughs> what it felt like. It, I was like, I know I felt this before. This feels like high school. <laughs> like right. I'm doing like a PowerPoint here. That was like, a good show, though. I'm not gonna lie. It was a good crowd. It was. It was, it was a great. It was sold crowd. out. Sold like, out. It was, great show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And everybody yeah. got paid, and yeah. But we we wound up. We're like, fuck this. We're going home tonight. I don't want to. I don't want to stay in this godforsaken state any <laughs> any longer than I have to. Uh, but I, dude, I still have to drive. Like when I'll drive down like those old country roads and shit with just two lanes of traffic, like I white knuckle the shit out of that steering wheel. I probably go 10 miles slower than I need to be. And like, it's, it's definitely fun. Like had some, some effects. Do you ever heartbeat ever start beating like faster when you see like a car, like approaching up you, like behind yeah. you faster? Yeah. Especially like a semi truck. Yeah. And coming the other way. Yeah. It starts to, it, it definitely, there's, there's a PTSD effect for sure yeah. that I, I think I have, but well, I know I have, I see a shrink for it now, but, but yeah, they, it, you know, they did what Western medicine does. They put me on drugs for it. So <laughs> <laughs> they put you on drugs and charge you four grand for it. No, dude, I, I only pay five bucks for my drugs, oh, yeah, five go. bucks a month. So I'm like, you know what? That's fine. That so be Do you it. actually like take them. Yeah, I'll take it. I have never took any of the uh, drugs that I've been prescribed. Really? No, I'm just like, <laughs> I look at him just like, I'm not taking that. <laughs> I probably I probably should, but it's just like, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm fine. So I, they started me out on like a really light dose and mm-hmm. then they doubled it like the next month. And I was, so what happened was I started taking the light dose and then I forgot to refill it. Mm-hmm. And then, so I was off my meds for two weeks. And I got, as soon as I got back on him, I doubled the dosage I was initially taking. Mm -hmm. So I was like a zombie for like a month. And like, I was really fucked up by him. And like, I was like, I'm getting off this shit. I just like, I don't feel like passionate about anything in life. Like everything is just the motions. Like I'm, I wasn't depressed. I wasn't sad. Mm -hmm. I just was uninspired to do anything. Yeah. You know what? That was the thing. Cause like when like folks like, well, my doctor, he like he prescribed me to like antidepressants. I said, I have a mm-hmm. feeling this is gonna go horribly wrong. They usually do. Yeah, because yeah. this is like because if I take this, I'm not gonna feel like doing anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna wanna like act you and come on, man. All comedians are depressed. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I was like, nah, man, I can't, I can't like nah, I don't wanna like mess with like the creativity. So I still have them just like sitting on my uh my counter to this day because I'm just like, well, I don't wanna like flush them out because that's just rude. <laughs> so i'll just let them collect dust it's so crazy how easy it is to get those two man all, yeah. all the like the doctors are really like man you sure you don't want any you, just, like, you gotta go you and just be like you seriously you just gotta go in and go i'm sad and they'll, they'll put you on fucking meth now basically yeah. like it's and then ridiculous. any question that they ask you just like give like the worst answer like, yeah you know i'm like on a scale of one to ten ten yeah <laughs> well just ten for all of it 
they they asked me they're like do you hear voices i'm like no like what the fuck does that no i don't hear voices because they wanted to see if i was schizo so yeah okay you know what's creepy though is there like there are some people that are born schizophrenic and then there are some people that just become schizophrenic for no apparent reason like fucking just one day voices show up and they're never the same they like, don't understand shit about it either no dude, rhyme right? or reason but like the medicine kind of helps but it really doesn't and, mm-hmm. and well, what i what i've heard from people that are that are schizophrenic is they, the medicine they give them makes them sleep all the time so yeah they basically are only they're like koala bears like they're only up for like yeah. a really small percentage of the day and it's like sure. you're just living the rest of your life just fucking sleeping like yeah f- you know 18 hours a day or some shit like that mm-hmm. man epilepsy is the same way it can like dormant for 40 years and you can just have a seizure one day That's and crazy. be fucked up for the rest of your life by it like there's because mia didn't start having them till high school like okay. it, yeah it was I, and like if it's someone's first seizure like you know the first thing people think is like brain tumors and shit like that yeah, yeah. but it's it's usually not it's those are extremely rare I'm do you not... get like dirty looks when you make jokes about uh from <laughs> about her Mia's, uh epilepsy from her no, not from her, just from like other people in general. Oh, I got booed for doing it once. I got booed in. We're at T's? Yep. <laughs> by another comic who's going to remain nameless because I think that's the most. I, I'm going to be the bigger person here okay. because there are a lot, like, man, there are a lot of comics that I see that I don't like. I'd never boo one of them. There's sure. nothing any of them could make me or could say to make me want to. I just think that's disrespectful. Sure. Like, you know that this person's getting up there and putting in the work to do like, you know how hard it is. Mm-hmm. So you should at the very least be able to respect that they're willing to get up there and do it. Sure. So like to you don't have to like it. You don't have to laugh. You can walk out the fucking room. But I just I think to boo someone is like, seriously, like, come on. Do like, Do I know this person? Um. I'll pull a picture up on Facebook. Okay. And I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. I'm pretty sure I know this person. I'm sure you do too. I'm pretty sure I do know this person. It's so funny when somebody would do something like that too. It's not like it's not like there's people out there that uh, have been deeply affected by the systemic oppression of epileptic people. Yeah, I know, know right? Yeah, like <laughs> I, dude, that was such a disaster. I should have. That was the night that we got hit by a car. I should have known. But that that fucking disastrous set was going to lead. There was no way that night ended any other way than nearly dying in a, in a car accident. Like I should have known I would. Dude, as soon as I walked in the fucking room, I look around and Jacob Wilson was the opener that night. And he's like, oh, Caleb, you're going to have a rough time tonight. <laughs> Three fourths of the audience is college aged white women. Yep. And I had. I had accepted yep. my fate at that point. Yep. I'm like, I know, I know exactly where this is going. Well, go. I noticed that, like, with T, he's like, and I like T going to T. Yeah. They have, well, it depends on like what type of show you're having. Yeah. Because like, there's different type of energies for different type of shows. So it's yeah. just like, it just kind of depends on what it. What would you get? Were you it doing the Kareem, Kareem in your yeah. face? Okay, that's very interesting because like when I did it, like the energy, it was a really fun. And that's very interesting. There was one point in the night where I had every man laughing and not a single woman laughing. And that I, works too. I accepted hey, that. that's I okay. It's like, I'll take it. That man. is okay. Yeah. That is a okay. <laughs> they probably were like, you know, mad at their boyfriend. Don't laugh at that. Don't you dare laugh at that. Like, <laughs> I had one girl come up to me afterwards and she's like, people were too hard on you. They need to learn to take a fucking joke. And I'm like, thank you. I appreciate that. But, you know, I, I knew what was going to happen as soon as I walked in here. Like, I knew. Do people I, feel good about themselves when they get mad at fucking comedians they man. feel so, they're superior like <laughs> yeah I, dude. I i showed that and you know what man i saw the audience and i didn't even really do like my offensive shit i reined it in and i was still too much <laughs> so I was like, i've heard you say i've heard caleb say some pretty off the wall things before, terrible and i'm thing. just like I was like, he, 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 you know what I'm saying? But like, uh, <laughs> you should, dude, there's some stuff that I'll never say on stage. Like you should, it, it, there's what I call inside thoughts. The there's inside stuff thoughts oh, never Lord. makes it like, I'll write it down because I think it's funny and I have OCD and I need to write that stuff down, mm-hmm. but it'll never see a stage. Like, man, never. I used to work construction, man. I, I, <laughs> I've heard some, 
I've heard some pretty bad things and folks just be cracking up at it. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. Those are, those are the kind of jokes that you tell when like somebody comes up to you be like, Oh, you're a comedian. Hey, tell me a joke. You know, yeah. All right. <laughs> I got you, man. Make oh, me you. laugh. That's what I always do. If somebody comes go. up and tells me, it's like, hey, okay, you're a comedian. Tell me a joke. I tell them like the most fucked up joke I can think of. <laughs> first man. one that comes to mind. <laughs> I, uh, I remember, um, we can can we swear on the show? Oh, all the fucking okay. time. Yeah. Okay, yes. sweet. All right. So <laughs> I was I was on a I was on an airplane and uh I was going first and foremost. Um, I don't know what it is about like riding airplanes and when you put on your headphones, like people just feel the the need to talk to you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, but when you take them off, nobody says nothing to you. <laughs> yep. It's because like, they're gonna meet their soulmate on man, yeah, yeah, probably like a movie. they they yeah, yeah, they watch too many romantic comedies and think this is how <laughs> so like I was what was I? I was on my way to my uh, to my auntie's funeral. Right. I was very close to my auntie, at the, uh, by the way. So I was not in the mood for talking like I was like I was a mess. So I'm on this airplane. I was in Vegas at the time. So Vegas to Chicago. So like I was like not in the mood to talk. And this dude next to me, for some reason, just wanted to talk. And I was like, all right, whatever. So then he asked me what I did. I mentioned, oh, well, I do stand up. And he's like, oh, you stand up. Oh, OK. So I have this joke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he was like, "You're gonna make it famous." Yeah, he like, like, yeah, he like he's pitching me this joke. He's like, "Oh yeah, you could use this if you want." I love. It. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" I, my friend, my friends will text me, and God bless them. It's nothing personal. I think yeah. it's funny because my friends will text me, like my non-comedian friends will text me shit, and they'll say stuff to me like in person. They're like, "You can use that if you want." I'm like, "Nah, I can't, man." Bro, nah. this joke was so bad. Like it was like because it was me. I was in the. I frick, I, I think I was in the middle, unfortunately. And um, I think I, I was, I forgot what seat I was, but it was him. It was a guy and this girl, they don't know each other, but they were talking to me about this joke. And he's, she's telling us this joke. And at one point in the joke, uh, the word cunt is used, mm -hmm. right? And he, and, and like, that's the punchline. So he says that punchline. I don't laugh because I'm annoyed. And that yeah. girl obviously doesn't laugh because the word cunt was used right and then it's just quite just like well, yeah man i mean i'm still working on it yes yeah, you can use it if you want to i was just like <laughs> can use i'm not using that joke bro like you no first off it's not even funny to begin with right and second like i know my the punch, favorite the punchline is i just say cunt that's i just it. say that's cunt. the punchline that's, right that's <laughs> you say that bro like you Say something like that at like teehees bro you're gonna get yourself ran out of that room bro. They, <laughs> they will throw a fit I so I was actually the one. So the next month after the Teehees mm -hmm. fiasco, um, he had Bill Queen and Rome Daly slated, and Sid had uh, I shouldn't have name dropped, but whatever the owner had come up, that's <laughs> yeah, whatever. He came up to him and said, "Hey man, like you can't have people like that back here. Like people like Caleb back here. It's he's like this is a cancel culture type audience, and we'll we'll go out of business if we keep booking people like him. So obviously they had to cancel Bill and Rome. Rome will burn a venue down. Like he won't even tell jokes. He'll just go up and insult the venue." And the, and the staff and the people in the audience. And they won't. There's a spot in Nebraska City that no longer does comedy because of Rome Daly. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Was they, they were that bad? It was that bad. Oh my God. <laughs> it's entertainment to him. To well, what, what did they do? What did they do that was so like, was he, it just a bad, pissy establishment or just like? I, it was that and it was some like government building. So it was like some fundraiser and Rome just went up and just insulted everyone, he insulted the owners, he insulted the city, he just everybody. People, and, people that aren't comedians really don't get that comedians have like this sense of humor that's on like the fourth level of yeah. like humor. Yeah. So like we're like we're like fucking laughing at shit that's like funny because this is funny because the whole thing is funny. It's like, dude, yeah. why do you think that shit's funny? It's like, I don't know, man. It's fucking funny. Like, it's just entertaining. The yeah. fact that, you, yeah, the fact that you completely ruined stand up comedy for an entire fucking thing. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That's You're funny. like, dude, that's fucking hilarious, dude. That's, like, that's pretty funny. A normal person's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Like, <laughs> that's not funny at all. And you're like, no, that's yeah, a that's whole situation. It's hilarious, dude. I think that's they would be. I think if, like, if, Bill and Rome, or even you, I don't I think they'd be fine. Who? I, like, not uh, to Yeah, they'd be fine. As yeah. long as they knew what they were billing. As long as they could attract the right audience. Well, I know that, like, um, at one point, the funny bone, like, uh, what's-his-face was mad because they uh, had uh, Louis C.K. 
Oh, we don't use the guy that was Matt's name on the show. Yeah, but yeah. he was just like, oh, that's, that's, he's still mad about that to this day. It's like, bro, like, he's, and then who else was it that they that he, they had up there? It was um, it was the midget because he got Brad Williams or whatever. He no, got accused no. of something. And no, it wasn't him. It was the dude who was in the Deadpool movie. Who's that? Oh, dude I know who I know who you're talking. T.J. Miller. Yeah, yeah, T.J. Miller. Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T.J. Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T.J. Miller, and he was on there too. And then like was, he, he oh, was never... he was accused of like raping some girl though, wasn't he or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, I, it was something. So, it was something. Uh, I don't know exactly lines. what it was, but it was more yeah. serious than Louis C.K. Yeah, it was, bro. Like yeah. people need to get off Louis' back, bro. Yeah, like, yeah honestly, yeah, yeah. Like, Louis was creepy, but at the end of the day, they said I got yes. Show canceled, like, man. They did say yes, though. That's the thing. Like that's the that's the kicker is that like a lot he. He told the he asked women if he could do it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And they said yes, and then he, he did it. He got his blowback, man. Like the show got canceled, and he doesn't really do like big. Fucking he doesn't do stadiums shit, anymore. Big stuff yeah. anymore. Yeah, people so need like, to let it go. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, he said, "Can I masturbate in front of you?" Now, did he probably use his position of power to get that? Would they have just said yes to some random dude? Probably not. But you can still say no. He didn't pin him down. He didn't lock him in the room. It wasn't like the. The Weinstein dude, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's not so. I mean, it's like at the end of the day, it is what it is. But yeah, I remember the individual you're you're talking about, he was going after Don Seeger about it. And he said to Don, he's like, Well, would you book Bill Cosby? And Don was like, If Bill Cosby wanted to come perform in my bar in Council Bluffs in front of 25 people, yes, I would book Bill Cosby. <laughs> he goes, he's like, Yes. No, you have to think about it. This is gonna sound bad, but like. I know, like, I know Bill Cosby trying to get back on tour now, but, like, yeah. I know there's, like, been some, uh, some repercussions, not repercussions, but, like, it's been a little slow to get going because of like, obvious reasons. Him, yeah. But, um, but you, you can't sit up here and lie and act like Bill Cosby would not do numbers right oh, now. Oh, yeah. And a tour because people won't want to know yeah what he's gonna They'd be say. curious if he dropped a special i'd watch it yeah. i, wa- I want to see him That's address it everybody everybody i would watch it a lot of folks would watch it because they want even people who are like i will never support bill cosby again y'all watching it they're still watching it yeah because yeah. they want they're curious it's they're more for cu- science than humor but they, they want to know see what it. he's gonna say now they gonna watch it and then critique it the whole way through yeah you know what i'm saying but you're gonna sit up here and watch it like, don't sit up here and lie. You know what I'm saying? But, like, Bill yeah. Cosby's uh, also an extreme compared to Louis. <laughs> yeah, Bill Cosby. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. And you're I'm talking to like, serial rapists. Like, that's uh, that's, like, that's kind of like apples and oranges yeah, right there. That's, I, I mean, yeah, but it's like when when Pete Davidson dropped his special. Did you watch that? No, I didn't see it. Well, it, don't watch it. But <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he Was it not good? It was, I fell asleep. It was, is it the same one? Is it the one where he talks about Louis C.K.? No, it's a new one. He, so he got, he caught a bunch of shit because he addressed the Ariana Grande thing and made fun of her. And people were like, Pete Davidson just needs to move on. I'm like, didn't she name a song after him? She meant, yeah, she was I, like, I, talking about I him. I feel he song. has a right to tell a joke about her yeah. when she's yeah. made like four songs that have mentioned his name. Like, you have I to feel- also keep in mind that like Ariana Grande got like very toxic fans. Yeah, I oh, should yeah, probably she does. bleep she that does. before people come after me, <laughs> bro. People, oh, <laughs> <She got you. laughs> yeah. Okay, no, okay. Here's the Her thing. fans are so toxic they freaking suicide bomber concerts. Today. They're, like. they're Ariana Grande <laughs> killed Mac Miller. I'm gonna. Oh, come, come on, man. No, come on, come on, man. <laughs> With Joe Biden. No, our uh, fan bases are like literally like cults, bro. Hear the word. They are cults. I know this because no, yeah. <laughs> um, I did a joke. Uh, I was uh, I was on TikTok, and I was like, um, "Here's some rappers who have the worst fan bases, right?" And it was like, and I mentioned uh, Nicki Minaj fans because they are very intense. Like that, they, all I was saying was, is that if you, it doesn't even have to be something personal. No, just say, "Oh, I don't like her music because of this." Yep. And they will and they will make it personal. And so then as a part of the joke, I read one. I read some lyrics by her that were like really not that good to begin with. Yeah. And I purposely chose some of her worst lyrics as my as the punchline. And I swear to you, bro, when I tell you, you would have thought that I like there's so many things that you can mention about Nicki Minaj that are bad. The fact that, you know, she is married and has a child with a sex offender. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah. you can mention so many things about her. 
I just said her music and folks were just like, you know, they were like uh, talking about someone wrote in the comment section in Arabic translated, God will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> folks were coming after me, bro. They're like, we're trying to get his account banned and uh, take it oh. down. They went on my personal page and they were calling my, uh, my IG. Cause you can call people on Instagram. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm not picking this up. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Dude, it, it's like, so funny. They said it's in Arabic, man. Cause like, I'm in a lot of like internet communities that are mm-hmm. like world. Like people forget that like on the internet, it ain't just America, man. Yeah. Like they're, they're yeah. they got internet and fucking like the slums in Brazil, you know, Somalia. I mean? so, yeah. Like, yeah, dude, the, the most racist people I've ever fucking like yeah. read shit from on the internet are all from the fucking middle East. Dude. Yeah, bro. They were, <laughs> they were going crazy on my video. And here's the, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. You kept Nicki it up, Minaj right? actually saw the video. Damn. She saw the video and then she liked the comments responding to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they do it, dude. So then the next video I posted, folks were like, yeah, Nikki hates you. Nikki saw your video and she hates you now. I'm just like, <laughs> you got Nikki ain't thinking about me. No, Nikki's over it. Yeah. Like Nikki, Nikki, bro, Nikki saw it, liked a couple comments, and then like went out about yeah. her day, bro. Like if I were to walk past Nikki Minaj right now, she would not even remember. She's not gonna be like, "You that guy off of TikTok," you know what I'm saying? Like, no, like, <laughs> you that bitch ass talking shit. <laughs> right? Those are people that truly, truly have nothing going for them. Man, I'm like I can't. There is no celebrity on earth. You would have to insult my mother to get me that upset. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like make a video like that. Like there's no, there's no, there's celebrities Imagine like musicians I like. Out there, Caleb, like got like you know, hundred to two hundred thousand views of somebody just talking shit about your mom. On TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> like, Caleb's mom, man. What the <laughs> sucks. Yeah. They got pictures of her that ain't actually even her. On yeah, it's like, like, like they just pulled up some stuff off of Google Images. Yeah. There. Like, I know that lady, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like I remember, I did. I got kicked off Twitter years ago. I think I was in high school because I used to actually like my Twitter game was on par like i had like ten thousand followers and mm-hmm. like back then and like i was a nobody like that was before people could like buy followers and shit and uh i remember i tweeted i said one of beyonce's albums went went viral and i said let me piss off three demographics of people right now so i said beyond or it went platinum excuse me i said beyonce is the first transgender to go multi-platinum since michael jackson and i had the <laughs> trannies after me i had the beehive after me and i had the michael jackson fans after me <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> that's funny i don't I, know i just i don't take that stuff personally because at the end I. of it, like, like I, there are celebrities that i like you know what yeah I'm saying? and but don't get me wrong man if you a fan of Nicki minaj man and you think her music is good like you're free to disagree. Right. But all I just said was, well, I don't think she's lyrical because of this. And I was making a joke and like folks was like, folks were taking that way too. like per- folks were like, for sure, we're going to find your address and we're going to da 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 I'm just like, bro, none like, of them are doing that. It's not off. that big of a deal, bro. Like it's just music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, there are people that are like, um, who's an artist that we're, okay. Like for example, I'm a Kanye West fan. If people don't like Kanye West, I'm not going to be like, you, and then I'm right. like, no, it's like, all right, well, cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, dude. Especially like right now, like Kanye just dropped a new album, like a, what was like a couple weeks ago or something mm-hmm. like that. I'll be asking people like, yo, you listen to that new Kanye album? And they're like, oh, I don't listen to Kanye because like, of whatever. And I'm like, oh, all right. Like, okay, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Kanye is away from the succubus now, though. So I think I think it's he's going to improve in his, his music. Did lot. you did you listen like, to his new album, David? I did. I have it. Yeah. Well, I didn't listen to all of it because it's twenty seven songs. I'm just yeah, like, dude. Shit. I'll, I'll, I'll he get, got I'll, the entire rap industry. Exactly. To like, yeah, I'll, I'll get I'll I'll get around it soon. <laughs> it, it reminds me. It reminds me a lot of like when he released that uh that one like summer album like back in like twenty twelve. You yeah. remember where he mm-hmm. got like fucking a hundred featuring artists on yeah. it? Yeah. And I feel like he I feel like he lost a bunch of money in the divorce. So he just had to like come out with like this hype album that make a bunch of money. Real yeah, quick. Maybe. I mean, so I, I mean, he, he he honestly, Kanye really don't have to like do music anymore. He's a billionaire based on yeah. simply off of those shoes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like people like He's really, running for president, man. man, and he wants to be president. So, <laughs> so I don't know, like, um, but that's the thing is like every time like uh like I would bring up his music and like the only time I will have debates about like Kanye West is like I'll have music debates 
just friendly debates, but folks yeah, be yeah. taking you're the, not doxing people on yeah, the internet. Folks be like taking yeah. that stuff way too yeah. seriously. Man. Never, not, never on the internet because it's like I don't fucking man. know these people. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, folks' reasons for it uh, for not liking Kanye is so this like like well he likes Donald Trump. I'm just like bro, we're talking about music. He ran against Donald Trump. You don't run. You don't run against someone you like. I'm just like. I'm just like too. It kind of. I'm like the dude's like really schizophrenic, man. And like he was off his fucking or uh, really bipolar. I mean, yeah, bipolar, like he yeah. was off his meds. His when, meds like, all yeah. that was going. I'm like, dude, y'all are always like fucking preaching, like, oh, you know, mental health, mental safety, health like, matters. Yeah, and like that. oh, and yeah, mental health matters and shit. I'm like, yeah, and then this guy does this real high profile thing when he's off his bipolar yeah. meds, and now mm-hmm. it's like. Nah, man, he knew what he was doing. Well, like, I mean, uh, I th- I heard a quote somewhere. So the only di- or the only separation between insanity and genius is success. You know, I, yeah. I felt I felt that was very deep. But uh, we all got to be a little crazy to be creative and stuff. Oh, but, absolutely. But like yeah. that, I so I thought he was joking about the the president thing. Like oh. I thought it was like, <laughs> but like he sat down with Rogan for like five hours, and I was like, oh my god, he's yeah. serious. He's, it, oh, I mean, dude, when you hear him talking that. to Rogan too, you're like, yeah, this guy's like a little nuts. Like he he was a little nuts, but you can tell he's intelligent because the way yeah. he's able. So it, it was weird because him and Alex Jones, when they both were on Rogan, like at different times, obviously. The, the, you can tell that they're both they're crazy, but they're intelligent individuals because the way they can break situations down and analyze them mm-hmm. in a way that a lot of people can't. And it, it, they're, they're, they have intelligent, thought out answers to things. A little nuts, but they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're, I think their brains work yeah, at a higher I, I like I, Alex, I, I like Alex uh, Jones, man. He's, he's funny, bro. Funny, he's I, don't, I don't think hilarious. intelligence and like fucking sanity are necessarily kind of on the same string. No. You know what I mean? They're kind of no. like different things. So Alex crazy Jones. dumb people and crazy smart people. So. Alex Jones is like, I, I used to listen to InfoWars when I was in high school. I get like, you know, you get, you get your weed and you listen to InfoWars. Mm-hmm. He talks about how 9-11 was an inside job. And, <laughs> and like they're making frogs gay. And yeah, stuff. they're turning the frogs gay. And, <laughs> I was like, this dude is hilarious, bro. I liked when he went on, uh, did you ever see when he went on Piers Morgan? Oh, no, I did not see that. And he started just like they were going on to debate gun control oh, because boy. it was right after one of the shootings. And Alex Jones goes on and he just starts screaming at Piers Morgan. He's like, 1776 will commence again, Piers. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, why don't you have me back in here with a boxing ring and I'll wear red, white and blue and you can wear your Jolly Roger. <laughs> by the end of it, it was like a 20 minute segment. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, Alex Jones was like, oh, yes, I can speak in this accent as well. And he's like, <laughs> he just went fucking ape shit on him bro like he was... embodies basically like like a a conservative on the internet bro yeah he is yeah. he really he's really yeah. like a, the like... conservative personality but like in real life because that's not oh. how they are in real life that's no. just like how they act online <laughs> yeah <laughs> man honestly it just kind of depends because like i don't know like i've grew up with i grew up like around like both sides you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like i grew up around like you know like liberals and i grew up around like conservatives right and so you can always tell a person on who they voted for based off of like kind of looking at their Facebook profile. Yeah, picture. you can. I'm not even going to lie. Like for some reason, like you can just tell like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> if they got the sunglasses, they've almost always voted for Trump. Sunglasses oh, and hat and taken in their front seat. Or, or, or like yeah. one, one of their profile pictures is of an, uh, a bald eagle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, if, but if they've got that on the flip side, if they've got like a mask in the profile picture, or the, the stay home, save lives. Yeah. I'm vaccinated. Are you right? Like, yeah. It's like, like, Oh boy, here we already know where this is going. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 uh, I was talking, uh, we never dated. We got close to dating. I was talking to a girl who was, uh, who was like, like that a lot. And it was so like with an- the COVID shit. N- not like with the, co- she was just, she was very, um, she was a, like a hardcore feminist. Oh, uh, she was, you know, she, described herself she was just like i'm kind of like uh i'm i'm lib you know i'm like lib what like you're a liberal like you know could you use the whole word please yeah. <laughs> like like she and we were complete polar opposites yeah i don't even know how we got that far into talking yeah you know what i'm saying the only reason why we probably didn't even like date each other for real for real is because like we were just both so busy with yeah. like, like you know kind of schedules and stuff like that like yeah. she she was getting i think i mentioned it one time on stage, like she actually uh, works for the city, you know what I'm saying? So she was that getting, yeah, she was getting ready uh, to start her job working for the city. So like, we wouldn't really have much time to date anyway, but like yeah. she used to be getting 
so mad at me for like things just like because i would yeah i don't know i always just like would challenge all the stuff that she would say because she was like very like kind of oh i see that uh you know i i think this was around uh i went to my homie dc's uh birthday party she's like oh you went to went to a birthday party during a pandemic with no mask, huh? <laughs> Damn right I did. Did you have fun? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I did have fun. <laughs> yes. And she would get mad. She'd just be like... <laughs> the, <laughs> see, the, the thing with people that are that extreme, either to the right or to the left, is they haven't experienced life a lot. Because yeah. you real, the more you experience life... I used to be hardline, like, libertarian, right? Like, yeah. no government whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like, the more you experience life and shit, yeah. the more you come toward the center. Because you realize there's just a Seriously. lot of gray area everywhere yeah. like it's mm-hmm. a, you know it, 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 anyone that's that hard left right libertarian yeah. anarchist whatever is it's someone who hasn't doesn't have a lot of they're either sheltered or they haven't had a lot of experience in life because it's nothing is like nothing the, the reality is that the truth is always somewhere in the center and mm-hmm. they're full-blown communism and unfettered capitalism neither of those are the answer to anything right Right. like those will only create more (laughs) issues than they solve so i mean it it, it, anyone like that i wouldn't want to be in a relationship with someone like that because if they're extreme on on political shit they're going to be extreme on personal shit too and they're not going to respond properly yeah if they're really extreme on political shit it's probably because they're really ignorant about a lot of stuff yeah they're probably not intelligent on a lot of things oh yeah like um i'm she she blocked me she blocked me for like uh a week yeah. on social media because like, <laughs> it was something really stupid like like i was agreeing what she said we were talking about like uh i mean it was a touchy subject we were talking about like sexual assault and stuff yeah. and a lot of the stuff that she said i said yes i said that's true i said but don't you feel like the women who lie about that should at least face some type of prison time? Right. Because that's a very serious thing oh, to accuse someone's someone life, about. Yeah. yeah. And so I said, yeah, people that- don't even have to get like, in, uh, you know, convicted of it, but they'll still lose their job. And, and they'll still lose their jobs. Yeah. They're, they're done. They're Especially if they out of college. Kids. Yeah. Like, their their uh, lives will, their lives will be over. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like, and I said, if that's the case, I'm like, this person needs to be facing prison time and this person who had to deal with this be restitution like yeah. there there has to be some type of something has to be done for this compensation per- yeah financial yeah. compensation or something and i said you have to i'm like you can't you you have to at least admit that in some moments not all moments but in some moments the court can be very unfair against men especially in child custody especially so, yeah. in child custody and i was just explaining and she no da, da, da. i'm yeah. like i said i didn't say that the stuff doesn't exist i'm not saying that women don't receive their fair oh for sure their, they their, do. their fair yeah. uh, share of discrimination yeah. about that but i said but you can't act like it's just one-sided or whatever and then she just shut down and i didn't hear from her for like almost like two weeks <laughs> and then like so then i <laughs> so then when we finally talked she was just like yeah so i, I blocked you because i was mad Okay. I was just like, I was like, mad about what? I was right. like, I was agreeing with you. Like, I literally said, I agree with you. All I'm just saying is this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. At that point, I knew I'm like, man, this, I don't know about this. That's one. Well, like, I, I remember I was like 18, 19, and I was seeing this girl briefly, and she she was pretty hard left, right? Like that, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember it was some abortion law got passed or something, and she was upset about it. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. And like, I think it's bullshit. And she's like, she's, she said something. She's like, I know you're just saying that. Like, no, like, I, I agree. I, 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 yeah. I don't think it should be illegal either. Mm-hmm. And then she just like, it, eventually it just devolved to her yelling bumper stickers at me. She's like, my body, my choice. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm like, you know what? I agree with you. But at this point, I just want to start arguing for the fucking hell of it. Like, you know what the best, the best thing to do is with people like that and I've, I've discovered this is to when they're really hard pro life or pro choicers yeah. is to completely agree with everything that they say and then also to, uh ask them to con- conclude that abortion should be illegal and then also they should make it to where child support shouldn't have to yeah be that, paid that's, too. that's where it comes out yeah <laughs> every because t- every argument that they t- they say like the my body my choice and then you're like yeah exactly and my money my choice right yeah like, that was dave Chappelle said that <laughs> yeah it was dave, if you can abort them we can at least I, abandon them oh it. yeah he that did was, say that, that was yeah, yeah. That, it was uh, it was i mean yeah i i think that's the fair way to do it because like yeah. the there are men that get women pregnant and the girl goes behind his back and gets an abortion and he's devastated, yeah. you know, and that's shitty. 
So at the same time, but he doesn't have a say in it. That's fine. She doesn't have a say in it. He pays child support. I have no issue with that. That's, that, that's <laughs> fair. Because they, some of this, man, oh my God, bro. Like some of that stuff, like you heard what happened to that freaking athlete, that kid. Uh uh-uh. I forgot what his name was. was he a football um, player? Huh? Basketball player? I think he was a basketball player. Oh, okay. And there was this IG model. Her name is Brittany Renner. Right? Oh, she's fucking toxic. You she's Google, a problem. Google yeah. this woman. This woman is like, she is the Michael Jordan of thoughts. Yeah. Bro, like she is a, like a complete, like, the Her and, her and Mia Khalifa are right? fucking succubuses. And yeah. so this woman prides herself. She like, she, she don't, she don't hide the fact that she's a hoe. She like literally boasts about it. And so she was grooming this dude since he was like uh, early college or whatever. And then when he got that big NBA paycheck, you know what I'm saying? She basically just, just got pregnant by this dude. Yeah. And now is demanding, I think it's like all $300,000. Jesus. Monthly for child support. Jesus. Men got to think about these things though, man. Like, especially someone like that, who it's public. That's the problem, she's crazy. man, is, is dudes <laughs> don't think when it comes to pussy, man. They nope, don't dudes fucking think. The, the problem is that, weakness. Dude, your dick will always win against your brain. Man. In, in that, it, when you're that young, when you're a fucking 18-year-old and college kid, your dick prob- will always beat your brain. The problem is, is like with like these guys, when you see somebody that's like, you know, on like the television on uh, the award shows, social media. Yeah. And you're like, yo, I used to watch, like, I used to watch this person on TV and now she wants to sleep with me. Right. Yeah. Yo, I'm balling. I'm right. a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look, I got, look all this game I got. Yeah. I'm able to bag Amber Rose or whoever. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and then they be confused when then they, they no longer want anything to do with them, but now you have to pay 200,000 for child support. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like they ain't thinking because they just they're so excited at the fact that, oh, somebody wants me. Oh, I'm from Nebraska. And all of a sudden, Brittany Renner, who's not from Nebraska, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Wants me like, oh, man, look at me, man. What man? What kind of shit are they buying for their baby that costs 200 grand a month? That's what I want. Not baby stuff. I can tell you as somebody that has a kid, man, ain't ain't baby stuff. Oh, yeah. My baby (laughs) needs sunlight. So we need to go to Cancun. Yeah. Once once every two weeks. The vitamin D level. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. I need to take my baby to daycare. So I got to drive it in a fucking Rolls Royce. Yeah. I need a Rolls Royce to take my baby to daycare. I did. Yeah. yeah, That's it's it's the safest car on the market. Do you not care about his safety? Right. (laughs) my 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 kid needs to get you know and learn its alphabets and arithmetic so instead of watching sesame street we're actually going to bring the actors in and then we're going to have a puppet show right don't you care about the child's education like what they they say like i don't know if the cost has gone up the last time i heard it it's like the 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 cost of to raise a kid from zero to 18 of just all the costs of taking care of the kid is 75 grand over the kid's lifetime oh over the kid's lifetime that's 18 years straight no, you know it don't. I mean? st- it don't stop in no eighteen though. Yeah, but because no, that, that's like, where it does in child support though. Gotcha. 18, yeah, yeah, child support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, because like when you get past eighteen years old, man, like that don't. I think like that's the stupid thing that like a lot of like parents and stuff are like uh, under this. Uh, new parents are under this kind of fallacy that like, oh, as soon as they hit eighteen, I don't have to deal with them anymore. It's like, no, oh, yeah, no, no, they're gonna keep asking you. Thing. Yeah, Dude, Gen Z lives in the is expected to live with their parents for longer than any other generation and i don't blame them like it's if you can stay at home and save fucking money do it like especially in your 20s i don't think i've met a single person at college that doesn't live with their parents like yeah even people that like 22 23 and seriously especially in college even if you're 22 23 24 fucking stay at home if you can and i know you want to get out in the world i get that but dude it also depends on like what exactly you're doing at the, at the moment. Because yeah. if you just sitting around being a slob, bro, then that, nah, bro, yeah. nah, nah. you got to get up out of here. I mean, if you got, if you've got actual goals and shit, yeah. like if you're going to school or you're doing whatever, I, I have no issue with someone saying, but yeah, if you're just, that's the funny around, thing is most people, I, they got a word for those kind of people that call them neats, but neats? yeah, neats. So just the people that sit around and like fucking watch porn and play video games all day <laughs> in the basement. Like, I mean, everybody knows like one person like that. Sure. But you know the funny thing is, is, most of the young people ain't like that, man. They're like actually out there hustling and that fucking working. Now, honestly, yeah. bro, like it's a yeah. oh, my bad. It's, it's a it's a like um, it's it's a misconception. You know what I'm saying? That like a lot of the, like these younger kids are just like they're, 
and don't and don't get me wrong there are a lot of like younger kids that be like bro what are you on right now yeah you know what i'm saying like you you acting stupid but then there's a lot of them who are not like that who are yeah. actually like trying to make things work i think because folks be acting like if you call out like gen z like if you call someone gen z that that's like an insult no as if there weren't so. bad people that are like in every era right especially <laughs> the boomers yeah like folks acting like boomers are just like oh I'm Jesus Christ levitating above all you. I, it's like, no, I no, love like, like I love the arrogance of boomers. Like I'm a millennial. I want to buy a home in the next two, three years. Sure. Right. I want So I I will make jokes about how I want the housing market to drop like a lead balloon because it affect like it affects me in a positive way. Yeah. Right. I don't want to pay two hundred thousand dollars for a house that ain't worth it in five oh, years. Yeah, yeah. Pray, pray every day for the housing crash. The dude. boomers, yeah. the boomers will call you. Yeah, obviously, you don't own property. I'm like, yeah, clearly. That's why I want it to drop. <laughs> yes. Like, exactly. I, yes. There's people out there that don't own property and won't benefit from it. Yeah. Being actually, like, there's a lot of people out and there. They're, they're like, like I'll get called selfish. And I'm like, I, yeah, you were all selfish. It's self-interest. That's what fucking You're drives selfish. this country. You're selfish for not wanting exactly. to drop. Like, yeah. you know, for wanting your assets to increase. That's fine. You We're know, both being that, selfish. That's the thing is like, because like, they, they want you to go through the same BS that they had to go through. They didn't really they, go the, through that much, the though. BS, they yeah, got the lucky. The BS they went through ain't that bad, because, like, yeah. they went... They grew up and shit when the fucking economy was like the best. It's ever yeah, been. yeah. Like, well, they had the best economy. The interest rates were nothing. Mm -hmm. They got a house for fifty thousand dollars on a thirty-year mortgage, and the fifty thousand dollar house in twenty twenty-one is a shed, right? A, like, lot, you know, a lot of them had. A lot of them had when they were at like a right before fucking retirement age too. Yeah. Had the recession happen. Yep. Where property values were able to drop, and the ones that weren't affected were able to fucking buy a bunch of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. and stuff because of the drop yep. and stuff. I'm like, dude, you well, guys like literally had history given to you on a fucking silver spoon. Seriously, dude. college was a thousand dollars a year. Like you could oh. get a college degree for nothing. It, it, back when the boomers were like, oh, that would be so lovely. Medical care was nothing. Like it, you know, if you, it wasn't five grand if you mm -hmm. had to, if you broke your arm and went to the ER. Like it was a fucking. Not, not everything was easy. They had like Vietnam and shit like that. So it's not. I'm not making it sound like the whole thing was a walk in the park. But compared, yeah. And the other issue is the boomers are the first generation that hasn't downsized. So like every previous generation, as they got older. If they had rental properties or whatever, they'd sell them because they didn't want to have to manage it. Sure. They would move the condos, retirement homes, apartments, et cetera, smaller homes because they didn't have a family in it to raise anymore. Mm -hmm. The boomers are the only group that has hoarded property. So as they've retired, they've just purchased more properties sure. and they hire people to manage them and do the maintenance. So they don't have to do anything, mm -hmm. but they've hoarded properties. So that's and the they, first like, generation. Macro, macro economic, economists have done like scientific studies and stuff to prove that like boomers hold like the most amount of wealth in any other any other generation in like american history so mm -hmm. it's like uh, no there, there's like actual like science that backs up these claims they're not just being like fucking well, mad at you guys like the the article i read about that it was like what was the solution for the boomers hoarding the property and it basically just said they all have to die <laughs> like, was, it was like it, it's not gonna I be mean, solved yeah. until they die that was basically what it said like, i mean Man, every generation got like something, you know what I'm saying? Like by the time that like all us millennials are like old and stuff like yeah. that, like we're gonna be like, well, the, the you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's like no, it, it. Oh, everyone has like you know their vices. I mean, I definitely admit that like Gen Z do be like a little annoying sometimes. Yeah, but it's just like, but it, it's not fucking no. Not that bad. Fifty years from now, our grandkids will be like, well, you guys didn't have to pay seventy six dollars for a tank of gas and for a <laughs> gallon of gas. So. They'd be like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> fucking right. right. That's right. Yeah, I miss those right. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess sad just as much as you do, man. I, I miss know. a year ago when it was like a buck fifty to put gas in my tank. Yeah. Like now it's like fucking take out a second mortgage to get it, it feels oh like. My goodness, man. And it don't feel like it, it don't even feel like it lasts that much no, longer. Either, it, I man. feel like it's I feel like it lasts less. I feel like they fuck because somebody tweeted they're like, name one thing Joe Biden's done since he took office. And somebody said apparently he invented a new type of gas because this shit's three times more expensive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I, I, I've always imagined like Joe Biden's presidency is like how it feels when you're 20. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. Like you just sit there, you can't go nowhere. Yeah. You're just like, uh, yeah. What do you, what do you guys want to go play? You ain't, board you games? Ain't, like, you're not really self sufficient, although yeah. you feel like you should be. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> I, was, I was watching the, the NFL pregame this morning, 
And I think Joe Biden and Phil Sims are the same person. Like, have you ever seen the body language and the stupid shit that comes out of their mouths mm-hmm. and like the voices even? They're the, I, I think they're the same person. But we just did like an hour and a half. We should probably yeah. wrap it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we have? Yeah, oh, we did a yeah, lot of fucking time. Dang. We'll have you on again. Do you have anything you want to plug before we peace? Um, nothing right now at the moment. I mean, I'm working and stuff. Uh, man, that was horrible. Let me think of something I need to plug. Oh, uh, I have a. I have an album out called Canvas. Uh, yeah, on all platforms. Apple Music, Spotify, under the uh, name De Marino. D-E-I-M-O-R-E-N-O. Uh, outside of that, man, just working. Got a, I'm working on a brand new film. So uh, in the middle of filming that right now. So, you Fuck know, yeah. it's coming soon. So, Fuck yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure, my dude. Yes. Appreciate Thank you for having that. me, guys. It was yeah. fun. Well, that well, hour and a half went by. Like, it went by really was quick, like, man. For real. <laughs> I was like, damn, episode. dude. <laughs> God, yeah. He could have been our Kanye or Alex Jones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right. Well, we'll see you guys later. Peace, Peace. the fuck out. Peace. Deuces, y'all.